the next talk, which is um, presented by Hyun Chul Jung uh, from University of Ottawa. Um, and the topic is blast retrofit of stone masonry walls using FRCM composites. So we, now we're switching um, to um, uh, stone masonry wall and then also um, trying to see some um, fascinating videos of the testing that has been done uh, by the um, Ottawa uh, group. Hyun Chol, it's all yours. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Hyun Chol Jong, a graduate student from University of Ottawa in Canada. So my topic is uh, blast retrofit of stone masonry wall using fabric reinforced cement tissues matrix or FRCM composite. So my presentation consists of a background, experimental program, and result, and lastly, conclusion. First, background. So over the past decades, many structures have been subjected to uh, uh, blast loading due to either accidental explosion like the propane gas explosion in Canada in 2008 or deliberate uh, bombing attacks like Oklahoma City bombing in the USA in 1995. So they resulted in loss of human lives and significant property damages. So this was my the starting point of my research to protect the people as well as structures against the blast. So as you know well, unreinforced masonry walls were very common to be used in older buildings as infill or load-bearing walls. However, these walls without reinforcements are very poor in out-of-plane resistance. Especially even with a very low blast, URM walls easily fail with secondary flying debris, which is also harm harmful to uh, people inside the building. So I came to narrow down to stone masonry walls for my research. And these pictures are examples of buildings having stone masonry walls. It could be historic, commercial, public, or residential. Again, stone masonry walls are also very weak in out of plane resistance, as shown in those two pictures below. So many researchers have proposed various retrofits to enhance the strength of URM walls, including concrete overlays or shotcrete, polyurea, fiber reinforced polymer, or FRCM. So my research is to investigate the effectiveness of uh, FRCM to increase the out of a plane blast resistance of stone masonry walls. So experimental program. So um, two stone masonry walls were tested. They are as built wall without retrofit and the FRCM retrofitted wall. The same types of materials were used for building those two walls and um, the same amount of actual load was applied. So for the strengthening of wall two, the three layers of carbon grid were used. used. And then this slide shows the stone units used for building the walls and um, the uh, dimensions of the walls. So FRCM system used to retrofit wall two consists of two components, a high performance cement tissues motor and a unidirectional carbon fiber grid. The, the cement based FRCM motor was enriched with uh, polypropylene microfibers. The FRCM was installed by professional applicators using a hand trowel. And the um, average total thickness of the FRCM retrofit was about uh, 43 millimeters. So the University of Ottawa shock tube used um, to uh, simulate the blast load using the um, compressed air. So what we were trying to simulate was the far field detonation with a peak reflected pressure with a positive, uh, positive duration of TD. The area under the tri triangle up to the passive duration is the reflected impulse. So um, the peak driver pressure can be varied between 12 and 100 PSI by using 
different set of aluminum foils in the spool section of the shock tube. And the positive duration can be increased by increasing the length of the driver section as well. So this table shows the test sequence for the as-built and the FRCM retrofit walls. The values in red are the common blood shots for both walls to compare their behaviors. And then um, this graph compares the reflected pressure time histories along the shots. And then the fifth shot and the sixth shot have the same pressure but different impulse or positive time duration because the driver length increased from six feet to 13 feet. And the specimen was moved into the opening end of the shock tube and the um, kind of uh, lateral restraint were added at the top and the bottom to reproduce simple support conditions. The reflected pressures were measured by two pressure sensors placed at the side and the bottom of the shock tube end frame. And the uh, LVTs measured the displacement during the test. And two high-speed cameras were used to record the motion of the walls. Also, the camera software was used to measure the displacement. So these are the examples of data acquisitions, pressure impulse time history, and that pressure displacement time history. So the result, the as-built wall tested on the eight shots, and um, it failed at uh, shot eight with uh, 57 kilopascal of reflected pressure and 447 kilopascal milliseconds of reflected impulse. So um, this is a video at the failure shot. Yeah, it's working. So it failed in a brittle manner with um, lots of uh, debris. Okay, so, so the maximum and residual displacement measured by the LVDTs or the high-speed cameras are shown in this graph. The azimuth wall survived up to the seventh shot, showing the 38 millimeters of maximum medium height displacement. So to give you a brief idea of the effect of the actual load, the load bearing wall increased the blast resistance quite a lot compared to the non-load bearing wall or infill wall. So the infill wall with our actual load was survived up to um, only the first shot with the 55 millimeters displacement, then failed at the second shot. And for the asphalt wall, damage happened mostly at the middle of the wall with nice profile curves from the simple support boundary conditions. And um, the FRCM retrofit wall was tested on the sixth shot. It failed at uh, six shot with 114 kpa, KPA of reflected pressure and um, 2000 impulse. This, this is the video at the failure shot. Uh, yeah, it's working. So this is the front view. Okay, so the, the blast performance that failure increased dramatically. The, uh, the reflected pressure and impulse increased by 100% and 350% uh, respectively compared to the asphalt wall. So this graph also shows the maximum residual displacement measured by LVT or cameras. The horizontal cracks were developed without widening much, widening much up to the, the shot five. Some delamination of FRCM from the masonry substrate was observed during the side of the wall at the fifth shot. Then it demolished completely. This wall controlled the cracks better than the asphalt wall by distributing cracks all over the tension face without being widened too much. So the displacement control was also enhanced significantly. The displacement at similar blast 
reduced by 40% to 74% compared with the as built wall. And um, this video compares the behavior of those two walls. So while the as built wall failed at uh, reflect, reflect pressure of uh, 57 and 447 impulse, FRCM retreat wall remained comparably intact until 123 kPa reflected pressure and 856 kilopascal uh, millisecond impulse. So and then failed at the last shot. So therefore, so it can be uh, concluded that FRCM system greatly strengthens the resistance of unreinforced stone load bearing walls by showing bearer blast capacity, displacement control, and damage tolerance. However, the bond between FRCM and the stone substrate should be increased to have bearer resistance, as Gian Marco commented previously. So um, these are the references and acknowledgement. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for a very interesting presentation. Again, um, an excellent area of application for a variety of um, substrates um, here in Job. Um, let me check for any questions. If there is one question that I had myself and also from a, one of the uh, one of the audience, uh, have you tried to use connectors of some sort in order to improve the behavior? Um, that's one question. And the other question that I had is that you use the, and I think maybe you can address both of them at the same time. You use a system where you have a simple support type of a connection. Whereas if you had connected the four sides, some of the ductility that the um, FRCM provides would, would, would probably increase the capacity of your section much, much higher than the 100% that you got. Do you have any comments on it as far as testing where all four sides are kind of in a way fixed or for that matter clamped? Okay, first of all, yeah, if I understood correct, the connection will bond between the substrate uh, FRCM material. I yes. definitely agree on uh, what uh, John Mark commented previously, the surface condition of the substrate or the, the voice must be provided a little bit because um, the the two different material from the substrate or the other the, the motor from the FRCM system they are totally different so the bond st uh, strength must be increased uh, if we use some kind of porous material as for the substrate so if I were using the concrete mason unit then it should have more porous surface then the bond between the substrate and FRCM should be uh, much uh, much more increased than the stone mason units. And then, so um, I'm sorry, but what was the second question? The second question was the boundary conditions because you actually have two simply supports at the top and bottom. Whereas if you had done it on both all four sides, how would how do you expect the results to be different? Yeah. So. Um, so what I did to reproduce the um, simple support condition, I just uh, moved in my wall to the, the end unit and I put a steel plate on top and bottom to uh, make sure that the wall didn't move uh, outward. And then also it has a little bit of uh, the flexibility to, uh, to move a little bit. So I just uh, used those two plates and uh, it just, um, Mm, simulate the simple support condition pretty well. And um, well, so, um, yeah, that's it, so. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much um, for your presentation.